All right, so I'm gonna quickly go over the first iteration of my 3D printed dual inline counter rotating EDF. This thing uses a single motor coaxial gearbox. This allows two independent motors spinning in opposite directions to rotate at the same speed. There's obviously a million things wrong with this first prototype, but this is meant to be somewhat of a proof of concept or a starting point to improve upon. So I'm gonna dive into the design and fabrication of the EDF, the motivation behind this project, and then the laundry list of things that I can improve on for the next one. So I've actually done a ton of 3D printed EDF projects in the past. I was able to test almost half a kilogram of thrust on a homemade thrust stand using FDM printers only. I was printing out of PLA and PLA plus for these. So since I had a bunch of these already designed, my main focus was coming up with this coaxial gearbox. The concept is pretty simple. It's just three bevel gears at 90 degrees from each other. I got these bevel gear designs straight out of McMaster. I'm using the same gear for all three points, but I suppose I can mess with gear ratios down the road. For this very first iteration of the gearbox, I printed these gears out in a super small layer height, something like 0.12 millimeters, to get as much detail as I could out of the teeth. I used 100% infill with PLA+, which I know is not optimal in terms of friction, but it was the strongest filament I had on hand. This first casing is pretty clunky. It has the stainless steel axles rubbing on the PLA to stay in place. I printed the gear casing in half, and these turned out pretty well. It worked, but as you can see, there's a disgusting amount of friction in the system. I was happy with how it moved though, and so I redesigned the gearbox a second time by cutting down on the volume of the case significantly. I also added these quarter inch ball bearings to the axle, which should help with friction out a ton. I then printed out the exact same fans I used in my previous EDF design using more or less the same method. I don't have my printers as dialed in for this as I had before, but they came out fine for this purpose. I designed the duct to wrap around the gearbox using a super helpful function called cavity in SOLIDWORKS. I had to print it all in four parts. This was a pain to assemble. At this point, I just wanted to get a working prototype. So the final product is just a super glue and duct tape mess. I had this method for my actual fans where I oversized the props and then ran them inside the ducts to get a super small fan duct gap. I decided to make these fans considerably smaller than the ducts just because I knew I would have tolerance issues. So in theory, a counter-rotating EDF has better performance and zero net angular momentum. The angular momentum thing is critical for things like a monocopter, such as the ones I've been messing around with for the past few months that are always spinning out of control, and potentially for other EDF applications such as RC VTOL aircraft. This is pretty simple to visualize. The symmetrical fans spinning in opposite directions cancel each other's torque. And then in terms of performance, this is a much more complicated issue with not a lot of research to refer to. There is a paper published by the Navy where they slap two EDFs on each other and then measured thrust, showing a 29% increase in performance compared to a single EDF. The second stage EDF straightening the swirling flow from the first unit combined with the attic static pressure are a big reason why performance increases. While motor stators are engineered to counteract the swirling effect of normal EDFs, this paper shows that the second stage EDF is a lot better at this at least from a CFD aerodynamic standpoint. And so you're probably thinking that a 29% increase in thrust doesn't offset the weight of an extra motor and ESC. And so that's why I started thinking about coaxial designs. The motivation behind all of this is that we're adding the effects of an extra EDF. This is obviously a very general statement and there's a lot more nuances issue than that, which is a good transition into this next section. So I'm gonna split this section into two parts the disadvantages of the design as a whole, and then the things that are wrong with my specific prototype. Some problems that stick out right now are increased motor loading. This is probably one of the biggest advantages of using two motors and two EDFs. With the single motor powering the rotational mass of both axles, I can definitely expect a significant decrease in battery life and added strain on the motor over time. Another problem that might arise is the complicated aerodynamics that come from the two fans instead of one. This can have potentially unseen negative effects. And then number three is it's really awkward to fit this gearbox into the system. And I'll kind of get more into that in a second. With the specific iteration, some problems that stand out are material choice. I think a lot of people are probably cringing from the very start of this video uh, about using PLA plus for the gears. I know I at least need something like nylon filament I might just get someone to cast it for me, but nylon seems like the pretty clear choice for this project. But yeah, PLA is definitely not supposed to be the long-term solution for these gears. Number two is other transmission losses. 
After I switched to the bearings, the main source of loss is definitely with the PLA gears, but things like tolerances are definitely something I can get tightened up um, to improve transmission loss. I can also improve on just the common aerodynamic stuff. When I dial in the gearbox, I can start messing with this. I'm talking like inlet lips, thrust tubes, um, different blade profiles, all the sorts of things I was experimenting with when I was working on the 3D printed EDF projects. Another issue might be the size of this gearbox. I can definitely shrink it down, uh, but this leads me to number five, which is basically the entire design where I stick the gearbox through the middle of the duct. I'm rethinking this whole orientation, mostly because of the aerodynamics. With this current design, the non-symmetrical obstruction of the gearbox not only decreases performance, but it's probably causing a bunch of thrust imbalances, which is no good if this ever wants to be on a vehicle. And obviously it defeats the whole counter-rotating purpose. I've looked into something like this that stages the gearbox far away from the fans using two independent axles inside each other. I think this is definitely the direction I'm going to take for the next design. Yeah, and this is obviously a lot better in terms of aerodynamics. Anyways, again, this is super janky. When I was testing, the blades were also falling apart. I ended up losing an entire blade, but at least now I have a proof of concept that I can iterate on. Thank you guys for watching. I'll obviously keep you very updated. I'm very excited about this project.